Senator Seliger, for what purpose? Uh, to speak on the bill in the process, Mr. President. Mr. Seliger, if you could put that in the form of at least a question to the author, <laughs> since it's not a debatable motion, and then and speak whatever you would like to speak on, but you can speak on the bill if you'd I'd like to speak on to the bill. I'd be happy to entertain a friendly question. You can speak court, that later. Senator Bedcourt, would you entertain uh, some comments about the bill embedded in some other comments about our process? I, I would be happy to entertain comments from uh, Senator Seliger. Thank You're you. You're recognized, Senator. Thank you very much. This morning, brought a couple of, of interesting observations, I think. The first of which is that if one are going to take notes to speak, they should be legible. And the other is that up through last night, we were, com we were considering contemplating a process to pass this bill that in some ways I think discredit this body, something that should be avoided at all costs. Since this process started, we've really only discussed additions or subtractions to one bill. Everybody had the opportunity only to discuss one bill. That means something because I have, languishing in committee as we speak, an SJR, and two bills that address property taxes. And so when we hear things that thus and such is not interested in property tax reform, it's a lie. We should all be, because we all have constituents who own homes and businesses. It seems like people would be surprised to find out today that the Democrats in this body also have constituents who own homes. They own businesses, and they're as concerned about taxes as anyone else. I was afraid that what we were going to prove today, that what is important is not the ideas and the tone of discourse on those ideas, is power. The thing that most surely would polarize a body, even if it is otherwise inclined to be deliberative. There are a lot of people in this room who very well understand politics and the possession and use of, of power. It is implicit in, in the legislative process. I'm afraid, though, that what we don't often talk about is what in important uh, and intensive discussions, what we don't talk about is statesmanship. What can we do to ensure that our discourse and our disagreement, however contentious, is marked more than intensity and more than criticism, is statesmanship, the regard for other people's ideas. We've all been participants in partisan activities. As a former chair of the Committee on Redistricting, the most partisan process that ever takes place in this building, uh, I am part of, of that and I am one of those and maybe the correct person to provide a little bit of introspection. My predecessor, the late Senator Teal Bivens, was elected years ago and when he was elected, Governor was a Democrat. Lieutenant Governor was a Democrat. The majority in both the Senate and the House were Democrats with the ability to thoroughly dominate any issue. Here's what the blocker bill did for him as a new member and as a member of the minority. Someone once told me, a really wise individual, a member of the House said, if you're in the House of Representatives, if 50 people hate you, you're okay. You can do anything and amend the Constitution. In this body, one person, alienated or isolated, can ruin your day and, your, and, and whatever it is you're trying to do. And that's what's important about 
whatever the blocker bill is. It ensures that we must engage in a discourse, and if a bill can't pass, maybe there needs to be more time and consideration. It's true that what we talk about with the blocker bill is a procedural rule. Well, they're all procedural rules. Every one of them. There's a book of them. And they determine the way that we conduct business and the flow of business. And without them, it would be just purely chaos. That's what rules do. What this rule says is this body is different. Is that we have a way to do things that I think is important and underscores that we must be willing to compromise. Yes, this is just a rule. But it strikes me that what we should also consider is this rule. From Matthew, do to others whatever you would have them do to you. And some actions that have taken place last week and this week would seem to, to indicate to some of us that this rule is optional. And I don't really think it should be. The truth is that tides change. Sometimes, and I'm certainly not, not guiltless either, we act as if we take turns, that somebody got 130 years from, from statehood and got to be in the majority, and now we've got that 130 years. I don't think it works that way. I just simply want not to be completely deserving of the sort of indignity that we may impose on other members. For what? The problems that I see with this bill, when you look at a 2.5% two, two cap, up in the panhandle is Oldham County. It's a rural agricultural county. Two and a half percent provides about $80,000. It takes half that to throw an election, which then I think becomes something of an unfunded mandate. Sometimes we talk about, and we've heard, a, 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 a very well-known office holder in Texas said, the Texas Senate is the most deliberative, organized body that there is, and when we contemplate something like doing away with the 19-vote the rule, we are not. We are partisan, and we are divisive, and what makes us any different from Washington, D.C., and whatever states do that sort of thing? We are told this is a big family. I've seen some dysfunctional families, and sometimes it looks like more like one of those than the family, I'll bet, that most of us grew up in. People around the state, cities and counties, believe that this bill is not only injurious to them, but is designed to be injurious to them. Uh, as I have said many times on, uh, to, to almost everybody here, that I want property tax reform too, and that I would do what I could to keep this bill from passing. And today, I have told all the county judges and mayors that I will do, I will perform in such a way where they won't think I sold them out and I pray there is that attitude and I take it because this bill is going to pass. No matter, right now nobody can get in the way, nobody has to be listened to. That being said, it is my intention on the motion to be made very shortly to vote for the suspension of the rule. And I very ardently, intensively point out 
I am not voting in favor of this bill. I am not voting in favor of, of doing away with rules that see to it that we treat each other thoughtfully. I'm voting, I'm voting for the Texas Senate, for our traditions and for the reputation that we have as a deliberative body with the thought that we don't have that reputation because we had it. We will have that reputation because going forward, we deserve it. I appreciate your indulgence and your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, members. The motion is on the suspension of the regular order of business. Secretary, I would call the roll.